type Carfection and Lotus into your search bar and you'll find high production value, in-depth reviews on pretty much every model Lotus has to offer. And I only say pretty much because unfortunately every once in a while one will fall through the cracks, which is why I'm so happy to be able to report that we're finally getting a chance to drive the absolute weapon that is the 2017 Exige 430 Cup. An absolute weapon indeed. And if you head online, you'll find an abundance of forums and comments about how people have swapped their bona fide supercars for one of these. Last year, we were lucky enough to drive the 311 on one of the Lord March track days. You can imagine the kind of clientele that were there, and the 311 ate them for breakfast. And when you look at it, this is really only 30 brake horsepower down on the 311, which I think around a narrow, twisty track like Cattle Park. We're not going to feel that short changed, and I'm just going to say that this thing will blow anything out of the water here today. Stick around and find out. Welcome to track mode. This week, we've come to Cadwell Park to find out why its twisty technical nature has earned it its reputation of being the UK's very own mini Nürburgring. While the actual Nürburgring was being constructed, across the channel, Mr Mansfield Wilkinson of Louth had just bought the former landscape park of Cadwell Hall, with the intention of turning it into a shooting ground. However, his son Charles had other ideas. <laughs> oh, Cornelius, not again. Dad, can a couple of my friends come over for a bike ride this weekend? Oh, yeah, fine. Just only a couple though, okay? Uh... Sadly for Mr. Mansfield Wilkinson, his plans were basically over, but Cattle Park's story had just begun. Race. <laughs> Let's do this, Abigail. At launch, Lotus hailed the Exige 430 Cup their fastest road car, and nowadays, if I are aside, it still kind of is. With a 430 brake, 3 litre supercharged V6 dragging a mere 1100 kilograms thanks to some sexy carbon fibre bits, it's good for 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds. The 6 speed manual gearbox makes for a guaranteed visceral driving experience, and as expected, it comes with the legendary Lotus handling as standard. All of this isn't exactly cheap though, coming in at a whopping. Let's be real. Are you really going to care when you're flying past the usual track day suspects? Dude, pull that behind it's you! It's one pull that behind you, mate. Come on. Thank you very much. In this instance though, we soon found out that the challenge here wasn't going to be other cars, but the track itself. Being one of only a few circuits in the UK that was not based on a disused airfield of some kind, Cadwell boasts mostly narrow and twisty corners with some crazy elevation changes and not a lot of runoff area. The lap kicks off with Coppice and Charlie's 1 and 2, a crucial section that requires a confident approach to say the least. Might as well call it balls because <laughs> it's, it's, it's wow. Really balls do have one, fun. balls two. Balls one, balls, balls two. Three. Blind balls. <laughs> onto Park Straight, which really only straightens out just in time for your heartbreaking into Park Corner. And providing you don't misjudge this, Chris Curve is next. A long right hander that sets you up for the gooseneck. A corkscrew type corner with some wicked camber that allows you to take it faster than you'd initially think. Mansfield is one tight left hander though, so you better be ready to scrub all that speed off. Then it's time to get psyched as you go under the bridge towards the Cadwell Park crown jewel, the mountain. Take this uphill left right combo at the right speed and you'll get some lift off. Mind your landing though, as if you're not on the ball, you might get a tank slapper at best and a visit to the barriers at worst. <laughs> no time to dwell on that though, as you have whole bends and hairpin immediately after. A sequence of ever tightening corners that you have to negotiate wisely before hitting an early apex at barn and sailing off into the sunset down the start finish straight to do it all over again. It just feels so light and agile. Like. Absolutely. It's, it's, it feels mega through here. If it wasn't for the fact that I think it, it just feels like you're sort of under the rev range where you get that torque kicking in, those 440 newton meters of torque. Yeah. So it just feels a little bit flat through there. Maybe I'll just try and get on the gas quicker through the yeah, end. Yeah. I just need to go quicker, George. That's it. Right, let's try and keep the revs up. Better. 
it's all right, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're pushing the limits, guys. We're pushing the limits here. I think we found the limit of that wing there. <laughs> Thank God it's not carbon fiber. Right, let, me, let me just pop the mirror back out. No, suspicious. Here we go. No, being suspicious. No, being suspicious. We are getting some air over the mountain bit there. It's, yeah, you, it's, you can it's, see it's, it a little bit. A little bit. It feels like we're flying over it. I mean, it's literally wheels off the ground. Yeah, it's not exactly British super bikes though, is it? Bikes in Cadwell Park were indeed a match made in heaven, right from the very start. But just as this relationship was flourishing, World War II rolled in, so racing sadly had to be put on hold. However, unlike most of the circuits in the UK, Cadwell was never requisitioned by the MOD, and so it was able to reopen as soon as the war came to an end, making it the go-to spot for all sorts of events in the late 40s. Bikes, trikes, sidecars, even greyhounds. At this point, everything had raced at Cadwell. Everything apart from cars. You see, measuring at only three quarters of a mile, it just wasn't a very car-friendly track. With this in mind, some alterations were made over the years with five main extensions being added. Some named after the successive sons of the Wilkinson family, and one being left up to the public to decide. And the public chose to name it... Wow. Anyway, this meant that finally in 1962, the circuit was able to host its first legit car races. The floodgates were open and from then on, cars hooning around Cadwell Park became a thing. Over in the Leeds office of the BRSCC, Secretary Shirley Wood is already hard at work preparing for the next meeting at Cadwell Park. Spectators were able to enjoy their favourite saloon car drivers in the 60s, James Hunt and even Ayrton Senna briefly in Formula 3 in the 70s. And now, us, here, today. I wish the seats were better. Or maybe they are actually, I'm just not fat enough to fill them. <laughs> I think there is a bit of that. Right, you're it. Oh, look how much fuel she used. Damn, she's thirsty. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's see what these brakes are like. Yeah, I reckon you can easily. Yeah, there, boom. Yeah, it cool. does work around a little bit. The it wobbles a nice. bit. Like it's not comfortably, you couldn't comfortably smash the brake pedal. No. But I guess it is fairly on a short wheelbase, isn't it? So I know I'm being slightly unkind to it. Well, we have a Lotus technician here today. <laughs> you can't help but like smile when you drive it. It's just like as soon as it hits that 5,000 rev. I love the fact that you can see the throttle cable in the rear view mirror every time you do heel and you heel and toe, and you can just see it flip in the back. It's sick. So I saw you. You were caressing the car, almost as if I was mistreating her. Uh, he'll be over soon. <laughs> he'll be fine. He'll be over soon. Okay, we need to talk about the gearbox in this car. Of course, we know better than to judge a model based on a single press car that has been through the hands of countless journalists, but it did seem to have a bit of a habit of not cooperating. Oh, all right. <laughs> Especially in higher gear changes. <laughs> of course, one workaround for this problem would be to dial back the aggression and simply admire the stunning exposed linkage. However, we found that dialing back the mechanical sympathy a few notches also seemed to work pretty well. Oh! <laughs> no mercy! Great! <laughs> it just like one more. That's more. it, that's it! Well, I wouldn't really want to drive anything I like think. a Lambo or a McLaren or Ferrari round here. Uh, I want something that I can actually get stuck in and throw around. I think it's exactly that's the case. I love it. I think it's 
everything you want from a track day car. What a lovely day. Isn't it just? I don't care who you are, if you come to Cadbourne Park on a day like this, driving something like this, and you don't have the best time. I would agree. And I would even agree. if you're not into cars, like, look how beautiful it is. In 1987, Cadwell Park changed hands for the first time, when it was taken over by Brands Hatch Leisure Group. On the one hand, this was great news as it got a shiny new paddock and a bar. On the other hand, it controversially lost two of its main landmarks. The barn which had given Barn Corner its name was removed to allow competitors more runoff area. Up to that point, the circuit licence actually stipulated that the barn doors had to be open during race meetings to allow competitors some margin for error should they outbreak themselves. And if you think that's just telltales, tell that to Doris, the old lady who had for many years lived in the cottage just outside Herpin Bend. Doris was cool. She wasn't into racing, but she also wasn't into spoiling everyone else's fun. So whenever there was a race meeting on, she'd head out to visit friends and family. Which was just as well, because one day while she was gone, someone allegedly invited themselves over for tea by driving a Mitsubishi Starion through her living room wall. Despite circuit officials trying to convince her it wouldn't happen again, Doris decided to move out for fear that it just might. Turns out that even nearly 40 years later, she was absolutely right. Red flag? Someone's been at the uh, hairpin. Yeah. Uh, call for maintenance as well, so it might be a bit of barrier yeah. work. <laughs> Stay in or where you want to go back up the top. We'll, uh, we'll open the gate for you if you want, if you want to go back. Thanks, I'm mate. Through the gap there, mate. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> With the sun threatening to set over the horizon, we weren't left with much time to record our usual clean lap guide of Cadwell Park. But that didn't stop us trying. So heading towards Coppice. Little squeeze on the brakes to get the weight on the front and as fast as you can through Coppice, as fast as you dare. Little blitz to third, giving the GT3 a run for its money here. It's gonna be up. Come on. Front end into the inside curve. Yeah. And you all the way down the way out. Flat out. Flat out. All the way. So picking a breaking point, two dash, into thirds. Make sure you hook it on the curb. He's all the way down the way out. And into Chris curve. Nice and flat out all the way around here. Get a nice straight line for your braking. Off the brakes, chuck it into the right, use all the curb. Wait for elevation change and flat out down the hill towards Mansfield. On the brakes, fairly late into second, but not too late, so you run wide. Remember, it is downhill. It's all the road on the way out. Get your line towards the mountain entry. Nice straight line out to third and second. Nice late turn in. Use all the curb on the left wing. Hook your wheel over the top. Smash the curb on the right. Straight over the mountain. Get some air and into whole bed. Again, carry your speed through here. Utilise all the curves left and right. And think about your entry into the hairpin. Straight line for braking. Second gear, just snatch it, be patient, and then flat out again. A little squeeze on the brake, get the front end in. Some cars you had to short shift here. And flat out down the straight again. You demonstrate this beautifully, George. <laughs> In 2004, Cadwell was acquired by Motorsport Vision, and as customary with all MSV circuits, a lot of improvements were made to spruce up the place. Fortunately, Cadwell's rollercoaster-like layout, which earned it the moniker of their mini Nürburgring, was left untouched. But why do people keep calling it that? Is it really worthy of such comparison? Well, Hollywood certainly seemed to think so when they used it to double up as the Nordschleife in a few shots during the infamous German Grand Prix sequence in the movie Rush. And it was totally believable. In fact, you don't need to squint too hard for the pedestrian bridge before Coppice to look a bit like the famous bridge on Antonius Bush. Even the whole bin section feels a bit like a tighter, shorter Hatzenbach. And come to think of it, every time I close my eyes as I'm driving over the mountain, it does feel just like taking off over Flugplatz. As usual, if you felt inspired to tackle Cadwell Park and you can't make it to the circuit for some reason, we recommend finding it on Automobilista 2 or R Factor for a crazy realistic experience, or if you're after something a bit more casual, you can also find it on Project Cars. 
Well, we were here before sunrise today and we're still here way after sunset. Is there a better sign that we had a mega day on track at Carroll Park? Yes, there is. The Lotus is parked at the bottom of the hill with no fuel. So <laughs> we're doing a very quick conclusion here because we need to go and get it. Um, I love today. I think Cadwell is a super underrated circuit. Um, I think it really deserves the, the, the likeness to the Nürburgring. I'd go as far as saying that German people should come here and drive Cadwell on its own merit. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. I think Cadwell is a little bit underrated. I think everyone from across the world should come and drive Cadwell Park. And for that reason, I am going to score it an eight. I, I'm going to have to agree. I'm going to have to agree. I think even though it can be a little bit frustrating when you're racing, you know, it is a bit narrow and it's difficult to overtake. As a track to test yourself against yourself, I don't think there's many better than this. I'd go further good. still and say that it's probably one of the most technically difficult tracks in the world. I would, I would agree, but I guess we'll only find out once we've driven every single track in the world. So True. let us know in the comments below which track you think we should tackle next. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, you know how that helps. And we'll see you on the next one. Catch you in a bit. Cheers. And shout out to MSVT as well. Honestly, today was super well run. Obviously with this show, we're looking at track days all over. And I don't think there's anywhere else or any other country where I've done a track day that where you can just go, right, I fancy doing a track day this very week. And there's always something there. Yeah. So fair play, they put on a good show. And people keep coming back and staying That's here it. until it's dark. Yeah. <laughs>